So I was uh, being trolled by somebody the other day, and I said, hey, you got to see this Baylor Wars video. And I said, really? So I looked at it for two seconds, and look at this. Holy shit, L341. Baylor Wars 2019 uh, is the guy across the river's new channel. And uh, I did kind of know that it was out there. And uh, it doesn't bother me one way or the other. But I figured he did a, he did a review on this thing, kind of, sort of. And I actually ran an L340. Let's see if we can figure out how to open this thing. I think you got to have both hands on it. So give me a second there. Oh, wait a minute. I don't even know how. Oh, it opens sideways. Okay. Hold on. I must be retarded. Oh, that's a little different than what the other one was, but wow. Okay. So, this is really, and I can explain a little bit about this because I know a little bit about these balers. Uh, it's basically a coon. Um. It is a coon. It's what you call the coon deer, or we call the coon deer in the bailing world. And uh, coon sold John Deere the rights to use their frame and do basic upgrades to their balers. And uh, they did. So the first one is the L340. I demonstrated it, and I did not like the width of the pickup. But what I'm seeing in this pickup here is amazing. I'm liking it. Uh, I don't know about the square pickup tines. I don't know that there's any advantage to that one way or the other, but I do like this part here. Um, the reason I like this part here is because this is where they break off the most on uh, big square balers. And if you're doing wet material uh, and it'll pinch underneath here, this here is definitely, that thing is massive. That's like a 3 8 inch bolt there. Uh, this thing here doesn't impress or unimpress me in any way. Gearbox, a little anemic to what I'm used to. Kind of puts me in mind of the uh, the uh, New Holland gearbox, but uh, and also the flywheel is pretty anemic from what I'm used to. Uh, not that it is small in any way. It is actually the circumference of it isn't as big as what I expected, but uh, it is. It is. It's quite quite small compared to what I'm used to. Doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. This area here was always a concern before I actually test ran the L340. For me, it was a concern because this thing looked like it was just this flailing gizmo in here. This it would. What it does is it it packs, packs, packs stuffs. It becomes rigid. There's a trip mechanism there, so when that gets, uh, when this here gets uh, enough pressure on it, it will trip that, and ba bang, up she'll go. It'll stuff the the hay up into the uh, into the bale chamber, and. Honestly, I really was going to buy one of these until I saw the Crone in operation. Now, the Crone is a very different baler, kind of bale, different baler. It is built way heavier than what this John Deere is, or this Coon Deere is. Uh, where they have one cylinder on the compression, Crone has two. Uh, they have two up top there. The two up top are bigger on the Crone than what's here on the Deere, and this this uh, housing here that holds these is about five times what this is on the uh, on the crone. Uh, so it, it's just really still a great system, and it's a stolen system. I mean, crone had done that before. Uh, John Deere's uh, 1, 100 baler, John Deere 100 big baler was actually a crone 9090, and it was, you know. I guess I guess John Deere learned some stuff from that and used that. I do like this. Um, I do like this because it curves, but I think they should lay flatter. New Holland had a way better system for last bale eject, even than the Crone. And uh, yeah, I think that they're just. But I think they're pretty decent. I'm not going to complain about this. Plunger, you know, it's a pretty good sized plunger. Looks no different than, say, the the crone. The well, it looks different than the crone, but it, it looks similar to what the Heston had. And uh, yeah, but 
I'm just not used to the light amount of metal that is on this thing compared to what the uh, to what the crone has and I'm sure there's people that are gonna say I'm a crone fanboy and I would definitely definitely agree with you there Nodders are pretty straightforward. They look like deer nodders to me. Uh, John Deere, when they took over this coon, and you can still buy the coon. You can buy a coon that is dressed in this coon paint, or you can buy the John Deere that's dressed in, obviously, John Deere paint. But there's a this thing right here. Uh, Chrome put that on theirs. And all that's for is holding parts. That's all those magnets are for. They don't, they're for holding parts. The best idea I have come across yet on a big baler is those magnets. I love them. I think they're great. And I should probably go buy some from the, uh, I should go buy some from the, uh, from Home Depot and put them on my older crone because my new crone has that on. And, you know, if you're fooling around here with little bitty parts, like the bill hooks, you just throw them up there. If you're messing with the little pins to, to the bill hook drive pins, you throw them up there. Uh, and I like the John Deere uh, bailing twine. I might just go buy some of that because I think it's cool. Yellow and green stripes. Talk about awesome. If I can get that in a, uh, you know, in like a 600 pound knot strength or a 650, I'd buy it for sure. Nothing is anemic when it comes to the uh, needle reset. That thing is definitely built pretty strong uh, and looks really good. It does look really good. John Deere is still metal where a lot of the other companies have long since gone to a... Uh, oh, there's no latch on that. It's only latching over there. Could be a problem. This is... Wow, that's neat. That's neat. That's your. This is for your uh, your cleaning. It's got squirrel cage fans in there. I looked at this <coughs> when we were out at uh, the York Farm Show, and that's just an access panel. Obviously, I don't like that idea because just well because of that, I have to get onto it and play around with it to get it where it belongs. And 99% chance you're not going to need to open that up anyway. Uh, yeah, just not. This here, don't like it. I don't like that. Guarantee you, in three, four years, you're breaking out these bolts here. They should be mounted on rubber. That's just my opinion. It's not uh, anything but my opinion. But yeah, I, I should be able to get a hold of this bailing twine. I like that. I think it's cool. Not that it makes any difference, but uh, needle design looks like it's pretty strong. They're actually multiple piece uh, needles that are welded, so uh, it's like one of those, remember those little dinosaur puzzles you buy in little novelty shops and then they're, they're made out of wood and you clip them all together and if you wanted them to stay together you glued them, but they were really stable and strong. Well that's what they are. Needles are decent. I like the rollers that are on them, they're nice and wide, they work really well. And uh, all in all, I think it's a good baler. Uh, I really do. A little, the leaf springs are a little light, but this baler is not nearly as heavy as what the uh, the crone is. Uh, it should have a weight on it someplace. Should be a weight sticker. Uh, might be up there. Still, John Deere wins the uh, award for the ugliest baler made. It is, it's just ugly. I'm sorry. If you think it's nice looking, you're wrong. I don't think it's nice looking. I think it's ugly. So we'll just go over this side. Oh, yeah, that's a nice, pleasant surprise. Okay. Wow. That's for the rotor. Now, this feeding system, I think, is good. This was one of the more uh, intriguing feeding systems out on the market. I wanted this feeding system when I was looking at the first crone baler. I really think that that is by and large the best feeding system on the market. It's an integrated auger with a packer system right there. Single auger, none of this 
double auger shit that I don't like. When you get into certain moisture hay, it will wrap on the upper accelerator, uh, on the crone, on the deer, or on the, not the deer, on the crone, on the New Holland, on the, uh, the, the Heston has a little different system, but I've heard wrapping issues with them as well. This, I think, is, is by and large the best. I really enjoy that. I think that's great. And they did not go cheapo on the chain to drive it. I mean, and that's just another another really good quality product that they're putting out. So I like this. This clutch here, when you trip that thing, it makes a, a terrible banging noise. I mean, terrible banging noise. So this is the same as what it was on the New Holland BB series that I had. And, uh, you know, I didn't particularly dislike it until it broke and then it took the shaft and everything. So you got to be careful with that one. But no, very good design. I like that. Um, this is definitely a uh, handbrake or parking brake, which 99% of the time you're going to forget to take it off. I'm sorry, you'll just forget to take it off and then you'll be driving down the road with your brakes on. I can tell you how I know because I did it and I wondered why I was smelling smoke and uh, that was definitely the reason. So yeah, I like this system. I, I do. I, I didn't think I would like that system, but I do like that system. I don't know how what the longevity of it is, but it is definitely cast steel. And then of course there is this, um, you know, this this uh, uh, plate steel that they welded welded gussets and everything onto. I think that's a strong design. Uh, Kloss uses it to a degree, and of course Kuhn does, obviously, because that's what this baler really truly is is a Kuhn. Um, with John Deere upgrades. Has the starter for the flywheel which runs on a belt which you'll smoke that belt. Uh, if that was the uh, crone it would smoke that belt before it got it to turn. There's a procedure to get that thing to work correctly and uh, if you don't know the procedure you're gonna smoke the belt. Uh, plenty of lighting everywhere and uh, yeah a decent decent baler. Really is a decent baler. Now the one thing I did notice about this baler over the crone baler was the clearance of the pickup. That pickup, it's all the way up right now. And if you cross over ditches and things, which when I was demonstrating the 340, the L340, it was not, it didn't raise up high enough to uh, suit me. I thought that it should have been higher than what it was. and. Obviously, they haven't addressed that issue. That is probably at 18 inches right there, so you're going to be at 20, 22 inches by the time you get this baler hooked up to your tractor, and that's going to raise that maybe an inch or two, or an inch or two higher. But when you cross over a ditch, washout, terrace, or anything like that, if you're an inexperienced operator, you will fuck this up. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're going to screw that up. And I know this to be a fact because I've done it. I've done it on the New Hollands, and I did screw up the crone, but I was bailing at the time, and it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't really the crone's, it wasn't the, the baler's fault. It was my fault, but the, the, uh, there was a stump that I didn't see, and the header was down, and I plowed right into it with an 85-30 pulling, the, uh, pulling the, uh, the damn thing. So I'm going to try and get into these boxes if I could figure it out. There's got to be some kind of a latch system here. Where the hell is this thing? Well, that's interesting. How do you open up the box? There's got to be a box here. I mean, it looks like there's one. Huh. Is it just a pull open? Yep, just a pull open. And crack you in the chin. I do like this. Um, looks like minimal area for dirt and dust to come down on top of you. Looks like it's quite easy to load. You got one there, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, you know, and obviously it's it looks quite easy to to load. It's not really high. If you've ever loaded a crone like I do, the crone is pretty high. That is probably the biggest thing I hate about that's a finger pincher right there. That will not make your life very happy. Um, but yeah they're not easy to this is really easy to load. So, all in all, if I was going to buy a new baler and it wasn't going to be a crone, it would definitely be the John Deere. 
I really still think that Heston has lightened their equipment up to the point where it's not worth it for me to even look at it. Uh, but. But yeah, there it is. Oh, the other thing is with this versus a crone, this bale chamber is very short. It's 10 feet. Crone is a 12 foot bale chamber with a one foot plunger path. So it's 13 feet. This is a, I don't even think it is a full 10 feet. I'd have to say there's probably a nine foot or a t nine or 10 foot. They may call it a 10 foot. They may be including the plunger path as well. Um, but definitely looks to me like a decent baler, but bale chamber makes a big difference. Uh, if I was going to own this baler, I would definitely build the extensions like I have on the on that Heston that I'm doing. These are set up for acid application, which is great. I like that idea if you're going to be in good hay, but you know what? You better have your money from those people before you ever, ever, ever purchase it. And this is a used one. And to be honest with you, it's used, but it isn't used much. And that is the one thing that scares me the most about John Deere balers. Whether it's an L340 or an L341, 330, 331, uh, they use them very lightly. They're not, there's no many, no hours on them. I'm gonna have to get out of here because it is gonna be about five o'clock. Where's my new corn planter? Right there, see it? Yep, that's a John Deere 7000 from 1980, isn't it? But uh, anyway. So that's my review on it. Uh, it's an honest review. I've used one, I demonstrated it, I liked it a lot. And the only reason I bought the Crone was because the Crone actually impressed me a lot more than what the John Deere did. Uh, but this new Deere with the wider pickup, I think it would definitely be a close second. The problem is it costs a lot of money. I was priced $209,000 on that baler before I bought my crone, the second crone. So $209,000 is a lot of friggin' money. And, uh, you know, for that, I'd rather spend a little bit more money on the uh, crone and uh, deal with that than I would with the, uh, than I would, uh, Paying two hundred nine thousand, two hundred thirty thousand, I think is what you can buy a crown for now. Uh, fully loaded with a lot of stuff on it. I don't know what that one would sell for. That's probably closer to two hundred twenty thousand anyway, because of the acid application and all that jazz. But anyways, I think they're about ready to close the gates. I think they close at five o'clock, and I am out of here. I'm headed home. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And there you go.